in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, the grace available to us simply for the taking or the asking is immense, beyond the ability of the human mind to measure. But yet we often find ourselves not availing that opportunity, not embracing that opportunity. For some reason we believe it's beyond our ability, or perhaps it's for someone holy, or perhaps it's for someone else, and someone more kind than me. It is for all of us, especially when we are weak and weary, when we are selfish. It is a corrective, it is a help, it is an assist, so that we might help make not only this earth more like heaven while we're here, but also the hearts that we bear, more godly and more kind. Let us ask now for forgiveness for the times we've fallen in this approach, but also now for strength through his forgiveness and his mercy. You came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed to direct the steps of the priest St. Louis, along the way of salvation and of the love of Christ in the company of the Blessed Virgin, grant us by his example that meditating on the mysteries of your love, we may strive tirelessly for the building up of your church through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, to the elders, and to the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death th those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You receive the law as transmitted by angels, but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God, and Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now, 
Saul was consenting to his execution. The word of the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock of and my fortress, for your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O oh Lord, O oh faithful God. My trust is in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad of your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I command my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen. Amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. classmate in seminary often said that the beauty and the true regal nature of the church could be likened to two beggars speaking to one another. And the church in its most beautiful and reduced form could be said to be like these two beggars. And one having found bread shares with the other where to find that bread. And so this bread come down from heaven is not simply 
in the literal sense, meant to feed us for one and done. And then we walk on, and maybe like those uh, ancient wanderers, those in, in exile, grumble, manna again, quail again, water from the rock again. We are to take what has been given, offered, and received, and share. Give away, give back, give out. One of the reasons why uh, the Catholic Church um, in most parishes insist on using real bread and real wine, not only are they kind of mandated by church law, but also things like candles that need to be beeswax candles or vestments that need to be of natural fiber, generally wool, cotton, linen. The books, not laminated in plastic, all of these things are consumable. What does that mean? Well, it means that those things that we are using, including ourselves in the service of the liturgy, that place in which we pray and praise God, they're all being consumed. They're all being eaten up. They're all being taken up. They're all being spent in the service of the liturgy, of that prayer and praise of God. What a more beautiful way, a more beautiful image than to look at our lives as lives that could be and should be consumed in this endeavor of giving out and giving back and sharing what has been poured onto us without ration, without any thought of portioning grace or love from he who is love. And so, Jesus is being asked to prove himself, as he has been several times we find in Scripture, by these would-be disciples, so that they could then believe in him. As if somehow witnessing his miracle or his act of supernatural ability or power would validate him. As if the Son of God needed validation to prove that he was true or that he was, I am, God, Yahweh. It's important to note, though, that this crowd, these questioners, these interrogators, that they had followed him from the other side of the lake where Jesus had just multiplied fish and loaves and fed this whole mountainside full of people. Remember that? And once he escaped to the other side of the lake, the crowd followed him, the same crowd, and basically said, Hey, uh, Jesus, um, Moses gave us manna. Show us a sign, Jesus. It's been at least a day since you fed the 5,000, and, uh, well, what are you going to do now? And as if you're really only as good as your last big act. How slow of heart they were to believe. Of course, Jesus had to correct the people. What we say is admonish them, not punish them, not one-up them, not slam them down, but to teach them. It was not Moses who fed them in the desert, he says, but God who gave them this manna, this bread from heaven. If they can't understand that sign in their own history, how can they possibly understand the signs that he is performing for them now? Especially if on the other side of the lake, we just saw this thing. And we need another, and another, and another. Now, how are they going to be able to understand or interpret when he says, it was not Moses, but it's the Father, who now gives you true bread, that he is the true bread. And those who partake of this will never hunger. And maybe there are literalists and rubricists and legalists in the crowd who say, well, he must be talking about an unending supply of bread. Maybe we should be looking at images of bakers and bakeries. 
It's not that literal. There is a spirit in the life here. They don't understand. Jesus can speak in Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. So it's not a matter of not being able to translate the right words or phrases. It is their minds, their hearts. And you and I know as much from our hearing and reading and listening to Scripture over the years that the fact that they crucified him. And in all fairness, Jesus claims here and throughout this Gospel of John and this section, they're shocking and they are odd and they are different and it is something to take in. It's still a lot to take in, even after 2,000 years. But yet, here we are. Here we are, we who profess our faith and strive to live that profession, preparing to be nourished by a meal and bread of life that the crowd couldn't get, couldn't fathom. And that's because of the gift of faith. Now, that faith is an invitation it's a response to the invitation of God to join him in friendship. Faith that is a free assenting to the whole truth that God has revealed. God proposes. He doesn't impose. We are free to take it or leave it. That's free will. Faith is a grace, a human act, and the beginning of eternal life. It is this faith that says through God's grace and constant help of the Holy Spirit, I believe, Lord, that you are indeed the bread of life come down from heaven for the salvation of the world. So in faith, we prepare ourselves daily for the bread of life, to become the bread of life, the body of Christ in the world. May it always help us to live and to grow and to strive to persevere in faith until that time when we shall enter into eternal life for an accounting before the judgment seat of Christ of what we did in the body while alive, whether good or ill. And we know what balance will tilt toward us that will tilt toward God. And so there's no time like today to work on that list, to look at those things that we have accumulated and ask, are we gathering more or are we giving away more? Are we sharing it as if there were no end to its abundance? Or are we hoarding it like toilet paper at the local Walmart, thinking that it will never be this way again? Someone will not give me any more if I run out. Thank God that God doesn't operate like a Walmart or our panicky neighbors. His generosity is without bottom, without end, without measure. So let's trust in that today and trust that he who, from whom all things have come will never cease to supply what we need. And so in gratitude and in thanksgiving, in hope and perhaps in some anxiety, let us lift up our petitions and prayers today to this source of unending life, this bread come down from heaven. For the church the body of believers in this world. As that body, may God bless it and send it forth with unity and purity. Let us pray to the Lord. For our elected and appointed leaders here in Kentucky, in our nation, and in all the nations of the world, may God grant them fortitude to rise above all that divides and to seek solutions which unify, heal, and prosper the family of mankind. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer persecution, whether religious, ethnic, or racial, may God protect them from all harm and prejudice and deliver them safely to peaceful lives. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in our community newly baptized and to be baptized, may God continue to pour out in them the strength to live out those baptismal promises. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died in our families, in our parishes, in our local communities, 
and all those who have died succumb, succumbing to the coronavirus. May God be merciful in receiving them into his arms and provide consolation to friends and family who have said goodbye to them. Let us pray to the Lord for your intentions and prayers and mine that we lift up now silently together. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving and merciful God, we offer these prayers knowing in faith that you will answer them according to your will. We pray this and we offer it through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord, receive, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim together, holy, Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Joseph our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have gone, fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. As the Savior has taught us, let us now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him, the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. I just want to remind you or make you mindful of the fact that this afternoon at 3 p.m., Deacon Mike Fitzmayer will be offering on a Facebook live stream uh, afternoon spiritual devotional prayers, so you're welcome to join him in that. But also tonight at 6 p.m., this being Tuesday, I will pray with you if you join us. Uh, brief evening prayer. And we'll also have our weekly Tuesday evening parish update. Uh, some news and some things that are happening within our parish that you would be interested and also particularly, uh, possibly, to be a part of. So please join us this afternoon, if you wish, at 3 p.m. for prayer, and tonight at 6 for prayer and a news update for what's going on in the parish, both here on this page in a Facebook live stream. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon you today and stay with you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another.